So I sure appreciate you guys working with us on this, you know, short week. Yesterday would have been a little bit of a of a stretch, so this is good. We'll get this done, and then you get the players. I'll help you any way I can. I guess we'll start with penalties. That was an issue last year. Only two penalties against uh, against Northwestern. One was a delay game, I believe, on a punt even. So how encouraging it was it for that, and especially for an offensive line that you're rotating a bunch of guys, no penalties for them? It's a, it's a good job. It's one game, right? So the... We had no, you know, we had two penalties in the Northwestern season, and one of them was on purpose, so we had one penalty. But you got to remember, there were a couple other penalties that did not get enforced, so uh, it's not as quite as clean as it looks. But we we need to just, you know, in this in this Temple season, we really got to we got to bear down on that. We did today. It was it was pretty clean today. What's your initial thoughts on Temple? Obviously, the quarterback's a, a pretty good player, but what do you think? He is a very good player. Um, they got a transfer wide receiver who from uh, from uh, Colorado State who's very impressive. And then they have the kid they had last year who's really a good player. Number He's wearing number one now. Um, yeah, two backs that are Big Ten level backs. You know, really, really good players. Got a young O-line, right? So um, see what we can do there. They're, they're learning. They're much like our, you know, our O-line, trying to figure out who's who. Who plays where? They're, they're getting the guy back that is kind of more of a, uh, a stalwart there. They have a, a receiver, like I said, number one. They're getting him back, so they're getting some guys healthy for this game. Um, defensively, you know, they're they're uh, they have a number thirteen is a really good player. He's a disruptive player. He has forced fumbles. I think he's got like six or seven forced fumbles in his career. We better know where he is. They have another transfer from. Uh, Colorado State, they must have went shopping in Colorado. Yeah, Colorado State safety's a really good player too. He showed up in, in a lot of different ways, you know, and, and um, I think they're strong up the middle. They got a young, D, you know, the, the D front, they have a true freshman playing in the D front um, who's big, and you can see he's a physically mature guy. Um, and then the corner, number seven, he's a ball hawk. We got to be really careful around him. So, uh, yeah, they're they're a much improved football team. You can see, and uh, they 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 should have beat us last year. So, you know, we were fortunate to get out of get out of the stadium with a victory. So we we know what we're in for, and uh, we got to have a great week of practice. And it's a short week, so we really got to bear down and, and chop. Going back to Sunday, it seems like you didn't really do much rotating with the DBs and the linebackers. Was that more part of the plan, or was that just because the offense controlled the ball so well? We didn't really get the play load that you, you normally assume you would get. So, you know, you, you practice all, all training camp. You, those guys got to get some work. Uh, the plan was to play um, some other guys more. We just didn't have many plays. So that's a good thing, yet it's, a, it's not a, such a good thing for experience. I guess, what was it like to see Mo Terry back and have a productive start to the season after what he went through last year and just what he brings to the defense now? Yeah, it's great. You know, like you look at a guy like Mo Ture, who was out last year, and it's got to tell you something when his teammates elect him captain. He hadn't played in a year, right? So the last time we remember him was in, in 21. You get, that's the kind of respect he has in that locker room. And he's a grown man. Like when he goes to tackle you, he tackles you. Yeah. Um, after seeing what you saw out of uh, Gavin Wimsett in uh, week one and, you know, how do you feel like you and the staff can sort of build off of what you saw from him uh, so far? Just stick to the plan, right? Uh, Kirk and he joined at the hip, and he's just got to keep studying and seeing it and studying. And when you get into game plan weeks, it becomes very specific to the team you're playing. So, yes, we have our base offense, but now it fits to what Temple's doing. And what Temple's doing is in some ways uniquely different than Northwestern. In other ways, they're similar which sounds, oh, that's good. Well, it's not always good because only the certain things that are similar can rules carry over for. And the things that are different, you have to treat them differently. And that is a young quarterback that's hard, right? Because you grooved it all training camp against Rutgers. Then you grooved it for six practices against Northwestern. Now we got three practices in a short week to get it all ready for Temple. And Coach Withers, who coordinates the defense, is a really good football coach. He's experienced. And we've gone against each other over the years and in both NFL and college. I mean, he's, a, he's an excellent football coach. So he's going he's gonna to present issues that um, only experienced coaches know how to present. 
you have an update on Marquise Watson, Coach Watson, where he's at, and do you expect to have him back? Don't know if we'll have him back for for Saturday night. I sure hope so. He's doing better. Yeah, and he's, uh, you know, he's one of us. He's a tough, tough guy, and uh, he'll 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 get he'll get well. What's something that you um, can expect the offense to execute better against Temple from the first game? Really everything. Yeah, I mean, we had a lot of things that had to be cleaned up. Um, we played with effort, which gets you, you know, sometimes when you play really hard, it covers up a lot of mistakes. So the guys did play hard. But technically and execution-wise, there's a lot to clean up. But that's what we practice for. You know, the, the old adage, the biggest improvement you make is between game one and game two. You know, that's always been said in coaching. Um, I sure hope it is this week because we have a lot to get better at. Could you uh, clarify now that you've had a couple of days about what actually the NCAA violation was for Nassim Brantley, um, and is it still lingering? Yeah, it's not a violation, but it's an, it's an eligibility question. I'm not going to get into the details yet because it's still under advisement. Um, but you could see Saturday how disappointed I was. I mean, this is a kid who came here and you know, had a tragic compound fracture of his leg, and, you know, playing at another school. And uh, I just don't I'm – I'm at a loss. I really am at a loss. But we're going to keep working because that kid deserves to play. There's no funny business. It's just that – Quickly follow up on that. Is that a thing that you think had lingered the whole season? Are you hoping for? I couldn't tell you. Sure. You know, when you try to predict that stuff, you're better off going buying a lottery ticket. Sure. And uh, with, with Marquise, has he been able to talk to you or the team at all just has, since, since Sunday? And yeah. can, can you share, I know it's sensitive, but can you share anything about, you know, when it happened and kind of how you guys told the team? Just I'd rather not. That's personal. I probably said more than I should have, but he, you know, I know people care about him, and I want them to know that he's doing better, and, and we'll get him back eventually. So, I know he's talked to his players. I don't know if he talked to the whole team, but he, I've seen him. You know, seen or talked to him every day, and he's getting better. Greg, one of the biggest surprises on Saturday was seeing Gus Salinskis out there with the first team. Can you talk about his development and what he did to earn the job? Yeah, he he gave us the best chance to win, and again, that's what it comes down to every time when a personnel decision is made. It's strictly based on that. So how did he do that? He was more consistent. Um, and, yeah, that's what you're looking for. How's Wesley, How's Wesley doing? Wesley Belly. Uh, I, th I believe he's going to be okay. Um, he was limited today. You know, again, we're on a short week. So, you know, this should really be the day they have off, getting a lot of treatment, and then get it cranked up for tomorrow. So... We've kind of just backed things up for the injured guys, but we can't back it up for the guys that are good to go. So, but I, I, I believe he'll be able to go. Ian Strong opened some eyes on Sunday. How do you handle this week, given that he's a true freshman, gets a touchdown? I mean, not just the development side, but also just handling the emotions and everything else that goes into a performance like that. Yeah, you know, every guy is different. You say, how do you handle it? Like, everybody's personality is different, so I deal with them on an individual basis. Ian's kind of a cool customer. Doesn't really show a lot of emotion, kind of chill. Um, works really hard. So as long as he keeps working really hard, I don't worry about him. Now, if I see him not working really hard, he'll, he'll know it before. Now, a lot of people will know it. Yeah, so I'm supposed to say, no, I'm only kidding. We're having a blackout at the stadium, and I would love to encourage all the fans to wear black to the game this week. So if you guys could write about that, that would be a huge favor for us, right? It's going to be cool. Night game, blackout, right? Can't wait. Kids are excited about it. You'll see them when they come in. They got their black helmets and stuff. They're breaking them in this week. So thank you.